All right, hello and welcome to this edition of the Carl Jackson Show podcast. This is your daily dose of objective truth in a world of confusion and lies. Guys, I don't need to tell you that we live in a crazy, crazy world today. Um, today is 9-11. Unfortunately, the 22nd anniversary of 9-11. I don't believe that America is any safer today than it was uh, 22 years ago. And, and I believe that America is a less moral America. Uh, today than it was 22 years ago. So today's guest is fitting, in my opinion. Today we have the president and the CEO of 40 Days for Life. You can go to 40daysforlife.com, 40 days, and that is the number, 40daysforlife.com, uh, to check out everything that they are up to. But Sean Carney, welcome to the Carl Jackson Show podcast. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me. Honored to be here. Absolutely. All right, Sean. So we were kind of talking offline. Uh, just in general, I, I I was telling you that I, I can't believe where we are in America today. Before we get on to specifically pro-life issues, uh, do, do you, that opening by me, do, do you think we're wrong? I, I feel like America is a lot less moral and godly today than it was on 9-11 22 years ago. Your take. I agree. We're also much more unstable um, I think when you you go back to 9/11, of course, everybody knows you know where they were, what they were doing. I was a freshman in college, and 9/11 um, wasn't confusing for people. I, I think it gave us a lot of clarity. It gave us a lot of unity. That unity obviously ended, as it always does. We went back to our old selves of of you know blaming somebody, but there was unity and there was clarity. And, and we don't have that now. We have had this upheaval in society where we're denying who we are as a country. Uh, we're denying who we are as people. We're denying our own gender. Um, there's a lot of confusion. And, and I think that the, the lack of confusion, I sound like an old man now, but we just didn't have it back in the day. We had a lot of problems in 2001, a lot of problems. Um, but we weren't as confused as we are now. And, yeah, and just good. trying to rewrite what it means to be a human being and what it means to be a country. And now we're, we're doing that. Yeah, that's a, that, that's, that's a very good point. You're right. I mean, we are just it, it's so confused. I I'm, I'm amazed at how the forces of evil, if you will, um, I'm, 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 I'm amazed at the number that they continue to do. Now I I'm a conservative. I don't expect you to get uh political, um, on here, but, uh, I'm I'm shocked. Honestly, I'm shocked of the complacency of many in the church. I'm shocked at the complacency of people that uh, claim to be conservatives or constitutionalists. Um, and I'm shocked of the sheer evil of of the of the left uh, that I believe um, have co opted the Democrat Party. But that's just me. That is in Sean Carney speaking. So Sean, let me. I don't want to get you in trouble here. Uh, let me let me ask you to give people just a brief overview of what. Uh, 40 Days for Life is about? What is your mission? What is your goal? Well, it's very simple and it's it's rooted in the grassroots. The goal is to end abortion. Uh, we do that by using our freedom of speech, which we still have, by the way. <laughs> we may not have it next week, but we have it today. <laughs> and we go out and we peacefully assemble and hold prayer vigils in front of abortion facilities around the world for 40 straight days. We have a fall campaign and we have a spring campaign. And during a 40 Days for Life, we'll have anywhere from five to 700 cities participating in that fall campaign or in that spring campaign all at once. And so uh, this has grown since we launched it nationally in 2007. It's grown to be the largest pro-life organization uh, in the world. We have a million volunteers in, in 1,600 cities in 64 different countries around the world. And it's because it's, it's grassroots oriented. It's very organic. Um, the ACLU said that 40 Days for Life was the greatest threat to choice because it's it's rooted in the grassroots and it's it's organized. And so uh, that is one of the great things. You know, our largest campaigns, our most effective campaigns are in places where abortion is very much supported and celebrated. Uh, California, uh, England, New York, Illinois. Uh, those are our, our, our best uh, campaigns that we have. And so it's joyful. It's peaceful. We pray, we offer alternatives to women who, who are considering abortion. We've helped 251 abortion workers who have had a change of heart and left their jobs. Uh, and we've closed 
uh, uh, over 130 abortion facilities across the country, including the one, uh, the Planned Parenthood in College Station, Texas, where 40 Days for Life first began, which now serves as our, our headquarters for 40 that Days for amazing. Life. That is amazing. That uh, is the, amazing. The, the left are, uh, used to argue that abortion should be rare, safe, and legal. Uh, now you have cases like uh, this uh, this foggy uh, bottom case where uh, you have I forget the name of the uh, of the abortionist uh, where literally people are willing to kill babies that could be born alive. I mean, I mean it's it, it it's insane, and people are increasingly going uh, growing uh, um, or accepting this or just closing their eyes to this. Does does that shock you at all? It does. Th- how blatant they are shocks me, not the fact that they want to do it. Um, you know, it was Bill Clinton that came up with safe, legal and rare because he was a pro-life Arkansas governor. And they said, if you run for president, you need to support abortion. So he came out brilliantly and sort of grunted and was like, I don't like abortion, <laughs> but I think it should be safe, legal and rare. And everybody just felt really cozy and nice inside. He basically gave permission for, to people wow. to be a good person and to support abortion. That was safe, legal, and rare. That, of course, is a joke now that is gone. Uh, now they want to deny health care to a baby girl who survives an abortion. And I don't understand what's wrong with that if you support abortion. Um, if you can kill a baby at eight weeks, then you can convince yourself to do it at 15 weeks, then 24 weeks, and then 40 weeks. And then if it survives, what use is it? Let, let him or her die. Um, so it is consistent. If you're going to dehumanize the child and play God, then do it and right. own it. And that's right. what they're doing. They just never used to own it. And now they're owning it. And I think one of the reasons they're doing that is, number one, awkwardly, they hate Donald Trump. So all of a sudden, because you dislike Donald Trump in 2019, you're going to light up the Empire State Building uh, to, to expand abortion and take advantage of Roe, allowing you to do it through all 40 weeks and have infanticide. So this is a recent phenomenon. We would not be having this conversation five or six years ago. It would be wow. unheard of. No Democrat would go anywhere near this right. stuff. Uh, but now it's common. Man, that's that's fascinating and 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 so well said. The, um, I I noticed you talked about the expansion of the amount of volunteers at uh, Forty Days for Life. And again, I'm speaking to the CEO uh, Sean Carney uh, of Forty Days for Life. You can uh, check out the website Forty Days for Life dot com. Forty Days for Life dot com. Forty Days for Life dot com. And that is the number uh, forty. So four zero uh, Days for Life uh, dot com. Are you seeing? Um, maybe more, more, uh, it, I'm, I'm trying to look for reasons to be joyful here, Sean. So, so are we, are with, with the amount of volunteers that you're seeing, is that, um, uh, is that indicative of the amount perhaps or percentage of maybe even younger people or, or, uh, you know, a, a growth of the pro-life movement in, in general, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. Oh, oh, for sure. And there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons to be joyful if you're looking for hope, uh, because this is the cultural front we're winning. You know, we're losing on so many uh, areas in our in our culture, not in the pro life movement, and and we've been winning for a long time because the pro life movement got to work in the grassroots. So you have pre- pregnancy resource centers that now outnumber abortion providers five to one across America. Um, you know, you've had all this movement. Then you had the Supreme Court actually correct their error. We didn't vote on abortion. Women didn't vote on abortion. It was an all-male Supreme Court that gave us abortion and dehumanized a segment of our population. The first time they did it, it was Dred Scott. And the second time they did it, it was Roe v. Wade. And they have corrected their errors. The Supreme Court often is is (laughs) cheered on the most when they're simply correcting their error. And so they overturned Roe v. Wade, and we're seeing this insane reaction because the left has been able to hide behind Roe and under the comfortable blanket of Roe and not talk about abortion and not defend abortion and not get into the nitty gritty of abortion. And now they're having to do that and they're not good at it. And it's awkward and it's extreme and it's weird. And so that's what you're seeing. As far as the pro-life movement, you know, the Generation Z generation is the most pro-life generation ever at their age. So typically, people are very, very pro-choice when they're young. And then as they get older, they become pro-life. 
And so at their age, Generation Z is the most pro-life generation ever going back to the baby boomers who gave us all this garbage. And so it's really, really great. And when you think about it, Generation Z, they all have their ultrasound photo. They have it. You know, it's not like they've seen their nephew or something. They have their own one. And so it's very, very encouraging. And it's it's getting back to uh, science. You know, when Roe was overturned, I I saw a a pro-choice woman speaking on Fox and she had marched for abortion rights. And she just said, I knew we were losing this whole time. The pro-life side became the pro-science side. They became the pro-woman side. They became the pro like free medical health care side. And we just got angrier over time. And that's what you're saying. Man, that is very interesting. So, okay. So following up on that, um, you, you touched on this message of messaging in a sense, the left has to defend their positions. I mean, they're just evil positions on this issue now, but I, 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 I exist in the political world here, Sean. So I feel like the right is doing a horrible job um, uh, post uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned in in messaging. It's almost as if I, I looked at the first GOP debate, and sadly, I, I think even the way the questions were framed by by Fox were uh, appalling to me. Because where do you stand on abortion? Six weeks, fifteen weeks, and I'm thinking, wait a minute. You have people that are willing to virtually kill a baby after the mother names it and 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 it's born. And and you're putting us on the defense, and and I don't feel like anyone messaged well. How would you encourage people to uh, message those that are pro-lifers that are uh, that are in the political realm? Yeah, they they really botched it. It was on full display at the at the Republican debate. And Martha McCallum, her question was shameful, as you said, because she basically she said, you know, we've seen how this is a loser state to state. How will you justify, you know, being pro-life? It's not a loser. We, we have 23 states that are essentially abortion free. When this went to the states, it went to the pro-life side. All those trigger laws to have abortion bans and, and huge restrictions on what was a very uh, deregulated abortion industry that the Supreme Court, you know, whether it was Texas or Louisiana, you have an abortion law in your state, the Supreme Court knocks it down because of Roe. It's one of the reasons they overturned it. They got tired of all the cases. Sure. And, and it was the opposite of what Martha McCallum said. The Republicans or, or any pro-lifer, they need to own it. They need to own it. Own the science. Own the science. Abortion has to be constantly defended, justified, and rationalized. Make them do it. They can't do it. They're ill-equipped to do it. Ask them what's wrong with abortion at 40 weeks. You know, uh, we just heard uh, Jen Psaki say nobody supports abortion 40 weeks where it's <laughs> it's like a common belief. It's like sure. saying well, nobody supports tax cuts in our country. Right. Sure, like, no, sure. no, no, no. That, that's like a common political belief. This isn't <laughs> this isn't like you, you believe in aliens. You know, this is very common. And it, but what if they did? What's wrong with abortion? Why can't you have an abortion at 40 weeks? You know, make them get into uh, the weeds. They're not able to do it. By the way, the midterms get way too much credit. Everybody says, well, the Roe v. Wade, everybody came out and voted against the Republicans. No, they didn't. Yeah. You can ask Greg Abbott. He owned the overturning of Roe v. Roe v. Wade and ending abortion in Texas. He won by a landslide. He crushed Beto and he was outspent. You see DeSantis yeah. uh, owned it. Kemp owned it. These wussy Republicans who didn't own it lost. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it's it's crazy to me because I hear this narrative all the time, and frankly, by uh, those that I uh, respect, even in the conservative movement, and and it's just like, oh, I don't know if we should talk. I'm like, no, you you put them on defense. First off, I do believe the candidate should be saying, listen, this issue returns to the states. This isn't this isn't a federal issue. The 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 president of the United States shouldn't be settling this issue. This is the issue for the states, and frankly. For groups like yours, Sean, uh, 40 Days for Life, and also churches to continue with the fight. Uh, so I do wish that they would make that messaging clear, but it is disturbing it, yeah. to me. And I, I think with the federal bans and the state's issue, I think it would be smart for them to bring up the fact that they're just uncomfortable with the inconsistencies mm. and say, look, this is something America has to grapple with. So you get full protection under the Constitution in Texas, but you don't in California. And we just decide that we did that before we had free states, we had slave states. And we said, everybody decide for your own. We don't have to grow cotton in Boston. If you need slaves, have slaves. That didn't work. We weren't able to sleep at night, thank God, over time. 
And, and unfortunately, that led us to a war, but it got corrected. And the whole idea that some people are Americans and some people aren't, and we're all going to live in harmony, that's not going to work. And I think the Republicans should bring that up. No, that's good. That's good, man. I, I, oh, good God, I, I need to send this podcast to the, <laughs> They need some serious help with messaging, and and you just made it so simple and clear. I certainly appreciate that. All right, let's get to. Uh, there's a couple of issues that pro lifers have been uh, facing that that are big. We uh, we we uh, oh, no, actually, I think that's when we were offline. Uh, but uh, Catholics and pro lifers. Uh, you've had the FBI literally uh, have have infiltrated uh, Catholic churches. There's no doubt in my mind that they've done the same to evangelical churches, and they are openly hostile to pro-lifers. Mark Houck, a volunteer of 40 Days for Life. I mean, he was put through the ringer. Why don't you speak to that, if you would, Sean? Yeah, Mark uh, was one of our longtime volunteers since 2007 and uh, had his house raided by the FBI um, he got into a little altercation with this guy harassing his son, and nothing happened. The local prosecutor who was a who, who supported abortion, he's like, "This is Philly. I'm I'm not prosecuting this guy. It's no big deal." Um, the guy tried to sue Mark civilly. It got thrown out of court by a judge. So it's just like this nothing thing, and it goes away. And then the FBI raids his house. <laughs> it's just like absurd. His his seven children were screaming. Um, Mark came out on the porch and, and like put his hands up like, Hey, what's going on? And they went behind him and stuck the barrels of their guns through his front door and aimed it at his children who were screaming on the steps inside the house. I mean, it's the, the details are just horrifying. So he of course, uh, went to court and got acquitted in less than an hour by a pro abortion jury in Philadelphia handing the shameful DOJ a well-deserved embarrassment and a well-deserved victory. We've represented Mark legally uh, from the beginning in, in, in all of this and will continue to do so. Um, but what people should know is this is recent. This newfound bigotry against Catholic Americans, Christian Americans, pro-life Americans uh, on behalf of our government is the direct result of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. They're mad, I guess, at the Supreme Court, but they're taking it out on us because right. you and I didn't overturn Roe. We're not, I don't have a law degree. I'm not on the Supreme Court. Um, but the Supreme Court overturned Roe. And then all of a sudden, this, this bigotry towards uh, groups of Americans. And I, I'm, I'm very hopeful because many pro-abortion people We've heard from an abortion doctor who's like, it's shameful that Mark Houck's house was raided. You know, I mean, we right. don't want this in America. And right. the DOJ is full of great men and women. We've worked with them for many years on different things to protect our own people. They've been very helpful. The FBI has great people working in it. Uh, but they have been compromised uh, significantly. And it's it's coming from somewhere. I don't know. Maybe one day we're going to find out. But it it's coming from somewhere and they are targeting us. They don't like us. It is bigotry. It is discrimination. And uh, it, it's just been totally compromised. And but God bless these whistleblowers that continue to come out. I think we'll see more over yeah. time come out and just and, and just you know tell us what's going on. But it's going to take a major overhaul because it's it's completely out of control. And it's very recent. Yeah. Yeah, we are definitely living in crazy and, and scary times. But I also think the uh, raid on Catholic churches or infiltration or what have you, I, I think it speaks to uh, speaks to what you said earlier. The pro-life movement is winning. I mean, the Biden administration and the leftist elites are so afraid of this movement and what it can do to damage. I mean, they're they're promising, hey, hey, ladies, you can go out and uh, kill your babies if you want. Uh, obviously, they're they're losing that war. And so they have to intimidate the people that are winning uh, the war for babies. So I think that's uh, that should be encouraging, as morbid as it may sound uh, for pro-lifers, that we are doing a, uh, a a good job in this movement. You guys specifically, 40 days for life dot com um, is where you go. The number 40 days for life dot com. Again, I'm speaking to the president and CEO, Sean Carney. Just a couple more uh, questions for you, Sean. You have Five pro-lifers who went to Washington, D.C. Uh, to stand and protest in front of an, an abortion clinic. If, if I recall correctly, they may have uh, blocked the entrance way or, or, or something to that effect. They're now facing 11 years in prison. 
This is insane. And this is the epitome of evil to me. But I want you to speak to it. Yeah. And and, and unlike the Mark Houck case, because Mark Houck was just out there peacefully praying as part of 40 Days for Life. Um, these people went and they, they blocked the entrance of a clinic. That is exactly what the FACE Act, which is from the 90s, it was to stop the rescues, which it was effective at doing because nobody wants to go to federal prison for 11 years. Um, they, that's what the FACE Act was designed to do. And, and basically, uh, these people, I guess, tempted the feds to arrest them and tempted them to, to give them the max penalty. And they did that, which sadly isn't surprising. And, um, and it is, when you look at all the evidence, you're like, you're going to send this person, this person isn't a danger to society. You're going to send them to 11 years in federal prison for doing this, which <laughs> if you just take like a fiscal conservative, they're like, that's just a waste of money. We have to like house this person and feed them because they went out to an abortion clinic, you know, now 11 years. And, and it, it is extreme. It is absurd. But it's what you said earlier. They want to intimidate us. Yes. That's what the whole thing is about. It's about intimidating uh, our own citizens. And it's an abuse of power. It's just extreme. And don't we, I want the FBI to kick down doors and, and get rid of sex traffickers and drug lords. I'm not a defund the FBI guy. I like the FBI, but I don't like an FBI that targets its own citizens because they're mad about something the Supreme Court did, or they just have bigotry because they don't agree with certain viewpoints of certain Americans. That is the definition of abuse of power. And, and that's what we're seeing with these, these five individuals. It's certainly what we're seeing with Mark Hauk. Uh, his is the extreme case. Um, and it's just out of control. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I... This is one area where I think we would split ways, uh, Sean. I, I, I've had the, I guess, honor, I should say, of being able to speak to a couple of the FBI whistleblowers, both on the screen and offline. And, and I am of the opinion that the FBI has to be totally dismantled. And, and I was literally, <laughs> I was literally fighting this. Is battle. that bad? Uh, honestly, it's worse. Uh, on, if, if I, if I could share some of the stories, it's it, it's it's worse. It is just not the FBI uh, that we uh, uh, that we thought it was. Even even the quote unquote good guys, uh, the bonuses that are involved now, uh, the, the 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 leadership, the uh, e even even amongst the laymen, unfortunately, that don't speak out. I I, I think it's sadly all the corruption that we see. Um, and the few whistleblowers that we're seeing, and, and we are starting to see more. Thank God for that. Uh, but uh, but you know, I've I've heard plans even from them how the good guys from the FBI could be absorbed into the U.S. Marshal Service. Uh, but they are of the opinion, um, and and I mean this is, they are of the opinion that there's no way, given the way the FBI operates today, uh, that it can be that it can be salvaged. Uh, I mean, and this is coming directly from whistleblowers. Mm. And when they explain to me some of the things that are going on inside, I'm like, okay. I mean, I went from let's reform to this thing to straight up let's abolish. Um, <laughs> let's abolish this thing. The good guys uh, that do exist that are remaining, uh, they can re-interview with the U.S. Marshal Service. And I'm convinced the rest of them have to be kicked to the curb. I think it's gotten that bad. Uh, but that is just uh, that is just me. I, I feel like when you have the audacity to participate in going after a Mark Houck or, or, or imprisoning people for 11 years. I understand they violated this face act, but give me a break. 11 years in prison. That is absolutely insane. And if you could play a part of that in good conscience, um, I don't think you deserve a job. I, I, I just, I, I'm really at that point. I think they've become, I, I, I just think sadly the FBI is being used as a tool for evil in many cases at this point, uh, once they change from a law, in, uh, um, law enforcement agency to intelligence agency, I think the mission has been totally corrupted at this point. Uh, but uh, but that's just me going on a bit of a rant. <laughs> 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 so uh, so anyway, I, I, here, here's what I want to ask you. I think this is the actually a couple more questions that I want to ask you. Uh, I'll line them up and, and you you answer in whatever order you'd like. Uh, uh, Senator uh, uh, Tuberville or Tuberville, I forget how it's pronounced, but Coach uh, Coach Tuberville, he's standing up for life, in my opinion. He's willing to let let military uh, officers be promoted, but he wants them voted on uh, separately. He doesn't want to include them, and um, uh, the 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 left wants a package where 
funding for abortion will be included in the military, so on, et cetera. So I appreciate the fight uh, that that he's uh, that he's fighting. And I don't think he should back down from that because we have a woke military today. Um, and I'm not convinced that our military is what it was. So that's one thing I'd love for you to respond to. Also, church involvement. Are you um, I am encouraged by what you said about Generation Z. Honestly, that was a breath of fresh air. But church involvement in particular, what are you seeing, whether it's Catholic churches, whether it's evangelical churches, are you just as impressed of what you see happening in churches or churches even talking about the issue of abortion and informing their congregation on the, the issue to, to a point where we can take joy or, or is there much more work to do even amongst people that love the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, yes, on the churches. And there's two reasons. Number one, because it's gotten so extreme, they want to talk about it. Hmm. Number two, because of the overturning of Roe and abortion in the media, they have to talk about it, even if they don't want to. So both are good. Both are encouraging. Um, we still see uh, abortion being a, a huge topic for uh, for mostly Catholics and evangelicals. Those are the two who have really built and led um, the culture war on 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 the right side. Uh, for, for many decades. So yes, churches are talking about abortion more. They're more comfortable talking about abortion. I think that they're embracing the science and realizing you don't just have to accept abortion because it's here to stay. Uh, all that's gone with the overturning of Roe v. Wade. It sort of gave permission to a lot of the middle of the road churches to address abortion and address it head on. I also think that the number of resources for women for free across our country, have the churches have realized they're there. You know, and many of them have supported them and built them over the years. But the ones who haven't realized we're not like the bad guys here. We're the good guys, like offering women free medical help, yeah. um, which they want to ban in Pennsylvania right now. So so that's good news on the churches. As far as uh, Tuberville, I mean, God bless Auburn makes you want to root for them, even though I'm an <laughs> Aggie and I'm, we're in the SEC. But uh, I'm really glad. It, it's awesome. No one's talking about this a year and a half ago. <laughs> no one's so stomping true. their foot going, you better pay for women in the military to travel and have an abortion. How degrading. No wonder the recruiting numbers are in the toilet. How degrading to the women that serve in our military to look at them and say, the only reason you're here is because we'll pay for your abortion and pay for your travel. You know, and, and if we don't, it's a great injustice. And they're like, well, I wanted to defend freedom around the world. I, I guess now I'm just a person that's starving to have an abortion. It's so degrading. It's so ridiculous. Um, it, it's not, fo none of this is focused on women. None of this is focused on, quote, health care. It's focused on the government making abortion their sacrament, whether it be the FDA, who is just deregulating abortion pills like no tomorrow, something they never would have done a year and a half ago, whether it's the military, like doing everything to pay for abortions and pay for travel, never would have been a thought a year and a half ago, or whether it's the DOJ that's raiding everybody's houses because they're pro-life. That would have never been an issue a year and a half ago. And so the, the government has lost control of abortion via the Supreme Court, and they're trying to regain it in every area that they can. And you see that in the FDA, you see it in the military, and you see it in the DOJ. All right, man, good stuff. I got to tell you, I, I can't even remember who I interviewed last week, but they said, um, <laughs> it's been a crazy week. <laughs> anyway, they said, consider this conundrum when it comes to the military, how our men and women are going out to fight for life, essentially, and fight for uh, liberty and fight for their fellow man that's sitting next to them in the foxhole. And yet we have uh, some personnel in the military that are so woke uh, that now they want to say, hey, these people that are defending life, uh, that are going out to preserve life and freedom should be killing a baby. It's insane. And I was like, man, that is insane. So I became even more grateful uh, for the coach there. So anyway, Sean, listen, man, I think they've got the right guy at the helm at 40 Days for Life. I've really uh, enjoyed this interview. And I, I, I always appreciate when I can ask questions and people can give me answers that make sense. <laughs> <I'll> be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a great... it's always better that way. <laughs> and honestly, most people I interview, that is the case. But but uh, but you're clear, you know your stuff. Uh, and so I definitely appreciate that. So uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience before we let you go here, Sean? Let me ask that. I just want to remind them something we touched on, which is this is encouraging news. We're winning on the pro-life front. And of course, whenever you're winning, there's a point where it gets a little worse before it gets better. And we're just in that point. 
And mm. so it's, it, it is, it, it, we are making tremendous strides at the local level and at the state level, and that will tr- trickle up to the federal level over time. All right. All right. I appreciate it. Again, uh, you have been listening to Sean Carney. He is the president and CEO of 40 Days for Life. Uh, Check him out, 40daysforlife.com, 40daysforlife.com, 40daysforlife.com. And again, that is the number 40. Uh, Sean, has the campaign kicked off? No, it kicks off September the 27th. And so we will have 681 cities participating in the fall 40 Days for Life. Okay, so September 27th, 40 Days for Life kicks off. So, all right, I appreciate you guys, man. Really appreciate um, uh, really appreciate what you guys are doing in this front for, for life and for babies. I think this is a war for babies, uh, and I don't understand why people are against babies. It is insane to me. Uh, but anyway, God bless you for what you're doing at 40 Days for Life. Guys, please remember uh, to subscribe to this podcast wherever you go to get your podcast. Also help out our sponsor, MyPillow.com right now. 50% special off of their Giza sheets. All you have to do is go to the top of the uh, MyPillow.com, click on the radio podcast square, enter my name, Carl. You'll get 50% off of the Giza sheets. And on top of that, there's deep discounts available for all my pillow products. Uh, you know what Mike Lindell has been doing for freedom. And, and in addition to that, he's providing American jobs, American manufacturing. It is a place you want to shop right now. You can shop early for Christmas, deep discounts, 10-year warranty, 60-day, uh, um, 10-year warranty, 60-day money back guarantee on all my pillow products. You cannot beat that with a bat. Uh, uh, you can give them a call, 800-858-0263, 800-858-0263, or go to MyPillow.com, use the promo code CARL, and all of those discounts will be available to you. All right, Sean Carney, thank you again so much for joining us, 40daysforlife.com, uh, guys. Check it out. Really appreciate you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. God bless you.